and welcome to a new edition of the Garrity Talks. My name is Lucien Gai and I am the co-founder of the Garrity Awards, the award that is redefining creative benchmarks by showing the value of the female vision in advertising. Today we will be chatting to Jill Hodgkiss, Vice President, Creative Marketing at Disney Branded Television. Jill is responsible for leading the creative brand vision, strategy, and tactics for all on-air marketing and promotion assets for Disney branded television. She has more than two decades experience marketing to adults, tweens, and kids, and expertise in both strategic media planning and promotional content creation. Her campaigns have received multiple awards, and she was named a mentor for the U.S. Department of State Global Sports Mentorship Program. Welcome, Jill, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. So you are the VP Creative Marketing at Disney Branded Television. Can you tell us more about your role? Of course, of course. So my role, if you think of programming content as a gift, um, what we do is the gift wrapping and getting people to come and open up the presents. That is our, our, our role. And I have a team of creatives where we will look, we'll work with our strategy team and we'll look at what this particular content is. We just launched a show called National Treasure um, see today, a few nights ago. And we go through the strategic um, decision-making with our strategy team. We look obviously at the content, work closely with the executive producers, and the, um, the execs at Disney, and then we'll figure out what the campaign is from there, whether it's trailers, extra content, behind the scenes, et cetera. And you and your team won an Emmy Award with the campaign Be Inspired, which is part of the citizenship campaigns for your kid-focused television platforms. Can you yeah. tell us about that? Yes, that was very exciting. Um, we won an award for a lovely piece we did about the Clinton 12. Um, I highly suggest people look it up on YouTube if you search Clinton 12 and you search Cameron Boyce, who was an, a, a wonderful young man. Sadly, he passed away a few years ago um, on our air. He was part of the Descendants franchise. And generally when we're doing these campaigns, we look to our young talent that is either on Disney Channel or Disney branded television. And we try to figure out how does the talent work into our pro-social campaigns or align with a particular one. So for this one, I was looking for some content for Black History Month a few years ago. Mm. And I was chatting with his dad on set. We were on set of a show that he was doing for us. Um, and I said to his father, his father is black. And I actually didn't know that Cameron's dad was black and that his mom is Jewish and white. And so I said to him, look, I want to find something that's meaningful for the black community. And I said, I'm not the right person to come up with that idea. So I'm curious if you have any thoughts about your family and how your son was raised, et cetera. And so he, he smiled and he pulled out his phone and he showed me a picture of his mother, um, Joanne Boyce. Actually, I didn't know it was his mother. It was a bronze statue. And there were 12 young people of this bronze statue. And he said, that woman there in the front, that's my mom. And I said, is, is she still with us? And he's like, very much so. And Joanne Boyce is an absolute force. She's an incredible woman. And I said, did she, has she seen this? Has she seen this full, again, it's 12 life-size bronze figures of kids who represent the um, integration of black students into a white school. And so he said she had seen it, but his family hadn't seen it. So I said, can we take your family down there, including Cameron, and we could do a piece about your family. And he said, oh my gosh, I would absolutely love that. So we all went down to Clinton, Tennessee together and Cameron and his sister Maya had never seen the statue and his mom was there, Libby. Um, and so the whole family got to have this experience of seeing this amazing monument that was erected to commemorate the Clinton 12. And we created this lovely piece and it won an Emmy. And, and honestly, like when you look at things that you won awards for to win, 
an Emmy for that specific piece for me was like a mic drop moment because it was so meaningful and and the family was such a fantastic is such a fantastic family. Um, so yeah, that was that's the story behind that. <laughs> And when you're working on creating new products, what is the first thing you think about? What do you think is the key to creating popular content? You know, I think it's passion. And I think it's, it's, I hate, the word is so overused, be authentic. But it's, really, <laughs> it's honestly though, it's really, really true. Um, there was another project that, again, when you say, what are the things that, you hold dear or that re were really meaningful for you. There are so many projects. I, I, I tell a show producers when I meet them that I treat every show like it's my baby or I'm, I'm the babysitter and I'm a babysitter and my team is a, our babysitters with references. So you can trust us. So you can go ask people and, and we care. <laughs> we love every single show that we do. Um, but again, in the, in the pro social space, they're, um, was a time when it was, we were kind of looking to do something new for Hanukkah. Um, and I was going back and forth, I'm like, what are, do we wanna do a song? Is there something meaningful that we could do some interstitial content? And interstitial content is not trailers per se, but it's expanded content that you can really get into the meat. They're longer pieces than a 30 second or a 60 second trailer. Um, so anyway, this pro-social content, um, we had the opportunity to do something for Hanukkah. And I had been listening to a lot of conversations from our black employees about what had happened with George Floyd. And one of the, one of the things that stuck with me that resonated and, and really has changed my life view is who is your community? Who is your community and how are you go, how are you mm -hmm. showing up in your community? Right. And so I look at, I have my friend group and that is a diverse community, but my community within my, my Jewish community, my temple was all white. And I was like, this is something that I need. I need to change, right? I need to make a difference and I need there to be more representation when it comes to that part mm -hmm. of my life. Right. So I started talking to my daughter and, and again, this goes into being authentic and inspiration. It's a long winded whale. To make it more um, and I was saying, I was telling her about this session that I was listening to and how I wanted to do something for Hanukkah, but something that was meaningful. And my first thought was, oh, we should have a song. Who should I go to to write it? And then I thought deeper and I'm like, I want to go to a Jew of color to do something that's meaningful and important. And she said to me, mom, you know, Davy Diggs is Jewish. And I said, he is. And she said, yeah, Davy Diggs is Jewish. I was like, wait a second. He has to write our Hanukkah song. <laughs> he has to. And so I went to our amazing talent department and I was like, you've got, I said, you have to get us a meeting with Davy Diggs or his music people. Anyway, cut to a few weeks later, they did. They were amazing. And they found his manager and I pitched him an idea of doing this. And he said, I think David would really like this challenge. Um, and so two days later, I'm on a Zoom with David Diggs and his band clipping. And it was this incredible meeting. And they, he said, I, I like a challenge. And he wrote a song called Puppy for Hanukkah, um, which has become becoming really popular. Like a lot of people in the community watch it during the Hanukkah season. And it's adorable. Again, you can see it on YouTube, but it's called Puppy for Hanukkah. And, and Again, like when you talk about how do you come up with things that are creative, how, what's here, right? What's what's your authentic self or what comes from your authentic self? So that's that's one of the ways. And curiosity, honestly, mm. also we have to be curious. Um, we have to ask questions. And and if you don't know something, you I I personally like to research it. I will dive in deep, deep. And how do you encourage the people you work with to give out their creative best? Do you have any tips? I, I would say the same thing, like ha, get out of the space of not our offices anymore, but get out of this, mm. this space here and, and what, what inspires you in the world, whether it's going to a museum or it's art galleries or it's, you know, other movies and television shows. Um, the team is really quick with 
oh, you, you're curious about this and they'll send a link for, for something or a poster for something. And, and again, it really is just getting out in the world instead of doing a regular meeting, do a walking meeting. You know, I think that's important because- A walking not, meeting, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instead yeah. of like this space, right? If I'm on the phone and I'm talking to someone and literally you could be inspired by a lamppost, by the design <laughs> of the glass of a lamppost. I mean, that's honestly like how I look at the world. It's all, there's always something that can impact and, and make a difference when it comes to being creative. Mm. So yeah, maybe you mentioned a couple of this already. So where do you get your creative inspiration from? Uh, Going to I, museums? <laughs> yeah, no. I, oh my gosh. I love, I love art. I love, I should say, I love all, I appreciate all kind of art. There's some art, art that, I, that I don't particularly love, but I appreciate it. And there's always, there's always something. I always walk into wherever it is that, especially museum. And I'm, and I'm inspired mm. by whatever, like there was a, a fantastic Joan Didion, um, P, uh, um, exposition in here at LACMA. And there were so, there were so many things. And I wound up taking pictures. I was like, oh my gosh, we could use something like this and do something like this. I think it's so important to just have that curiosity that, that, authentic you know curiosity all the time in every walk of life hmm. and uh, Disney will be celebrating 100 years this year what yeah. kind of celebrations are you preparing you know it's so funny that I well, I was thinking about that and we we do things on the air that would align with the broader there's a, a Disney 100 group and they're doing so much content oh. and doing so much planning yes yeah, so once it, it gets not closer, but we'll start putting things out on the air that celebrate Disney 100 that I'm sure they'll have a ton at the parks uh, to celebrate the Disney 100. But yeah, again, that's a group that is well into production with doing a special and all that good stuff. And I, I guess it will be a worldwide thing, right? Oh, we'll be sure. celebrating I'm it sure. all around the yeah. world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Very I much looking forward to seeing that. Yes, <laughs> and yes. you're also celebrating 20 years working oh in Disney. God, Sorry. <laughs> How do you five. plan to celebrate? I, I, it's going to be my 20th birthday because I started when I was five. Um, <laughs> How do you plan to celebrate? And also, what's your overview or your balance of these 20 years? I Well, the celebration they do I think they still they did it this year I hope they they continue with it they have this wonderful dinner for everyone who has celebrated 20 years at the company and so oh. usually it's the CEO so I'm hoping that Bob Iger will be the master of ceremonies at that dinner which would be wonderful um and they have characters there and they you get an, a beautiful statue um which is great and I will be excited to celebrate that way. And then just as far as reflecting back, people say to me, my God, 20 years, you've been in a, how did you stay there for 20 years? And I always say that um, it changes. It's change is the only thing that's consistent. I think, which we've all learned in every industry that we're, we've been in, in the past few years. Um, and I love, I do love a challenge too. And so when there's a pivot that's been within my department or been within the company, it's how, how can I morph or change myself to fit into that, not into a square. I, I'm definitely the square peg in a round hole for sure. Um, but how, how can I align myself and make what I do and my team does work in the in particular environment? So honestly, that it my career has changed so many different ways from reporting structure, reporting structure to the content that we work on. It's expanded, it's contracted, it's expanded again. It's it's very um, it's very fluid, and that is what I love about it. And I tell people when I'm looking to hire someone, you know, I I, I say to them one of the biggest selling points to someone who's sitting across you know the desk. Mm whatever it, it would be, is look at Disney like a smorgasbord. And there are so many different things that you can experience if you are willing to be curious. And mm. 
stay, you know, people want you sometimes to stay and you're willing to do your job, but if you're willing to go out to help or to stretch, that's what I have absolutely loved about my 20 years here, that if I've seen something that really interests me, I've had the opportunity to ask questions or to, to dig a little bit and find out about it. And I, I am grateful for that being at, at Disney to, and everyone is welcoming. You know, if you ask a question and you want to know something, I don't know if I've ever been met with a, mm, no, don't, I'm not going <laughs> to, not going to help you or answer that. It's always people are like, yo, yeah, let me tell you about this or yeah, it's very, very interesting. And what is the Disney content you are most proud of or your favorite? I know it's like uh, trying to pick up uh, your favorite child. Yeah, <laughs> like see, I'm before. a babysitter. I can't, I can't, parents <laughs> hate me if I said that. I do that. Um, gosh, there's honestly, there's so much. I work on animation for our six to 11s. I work on Disney junior content for our preschoolers and parents. And I work on content for Disney plus that is family, sometimes kids, sometimes adults without kids. We call it a walk. Um, and there's always something different about every content, every piece of content, every show, there's always something that's just so interesting like national treasure that i was saying that just launched that's you know big and the movie franchise was so fantastic and there's this amazing lead a female lead who is in the series talking about female empowerment and and she's wonderful Catherine zeta jones plays the villain so you have these two female um leads which are, is great um i'm working with closely with the the show people on a show called percy jackson uh, which is not coming out for a bit, but that is wonderful. And then there's an animated show called Kiff and Kiff is wonderful and fantastic. And a show called Molly, the ghost of Molly McGee. And I mean, there's so many that, <laughs> that it's re it really is every, every show has its beauty and it's, you know, when we talk about art, right. There's a different style. There's a different cinematic style. There's a different drawing style. So it's, it's hard to, it's really hard to pick. I have that curious. Okay. Answer, so sorry. <laughs> I can't give an answer on that one. Uh, and you, you have a Bachelor of Arts in Communication from the University of Massachusetts, and you started your career in TV production and a traditional TV channel like NBC. What is the main differences or changes you have seen over the years between traditional TV channels and new platforms like Disney? That have become so popular in the last years. I can imagine it's like different worlds, yeah. right? Do we have a couple hours? No, just kidding. <laughs> um, I would say that the difference, I noticed the difference pretty early on. I noticed the difference um, with broadcast and then on the, we'll call it the cable side, right? Because mm. it, it is, we're a, amalgamation right now, right? One feeds the other and leads to the other. So it's very different. But when I first made the transition, I realized that there was more flexibility uh, and real, to have a little more fun on the cable side. Mm. Because, and, and especially with the kids pieces, we were doing interstitials and content that had, that was just, um, was greater in length. So if we had a movie to promote, we could create an interstitial series with a talent that would air alongside the movie or a repeat airing of the movie. Um, and that was different than broadcast because with broadcast, you had, here's your specific thing that you're, you know, you, you're doing a trailer and you have all these different pieces that would obviously help promote the show. And especially in the kids space, repeat airing is something that we were very conscious of and that a, a child might watch a program, but then they want to watch it over and over again. They want to learn the lines. They want to do something fun with their friends. There's, there's this show that is crazy called Bluey and everybody loves this show, Bluey. It's on uh, Disney Junior. And so anecdotally, my, I have two daughters. My other daughter was babysitting and the little girl she babysits for made her watch the episode <laughs> and then they had to watch it again and act it out. So, oh. so, but that's normal children. That's normal behavior for a child. So mm. 
looking at that lens very differently as how are you and I consuming content and how are children and their family, if children and their parents are just children consuming content. Um, so so that, that was the biggest difference that I had noticed was just getting to play a little bit more. And then I also have uh, done music, lots of music videos for the channels, which is great fun. And, and um, that, that wasn't something we did in, again in the, in the broadcast sense, um, but the, the music videos were all to market whatever the particular movie or show we were working on was. And do you have an all time favorite TV show? Oh gosh, I mean, yeah. Um, that's another hard one. <laughs> that's so hard too, because I, I, it's there. Are even ones that you don't like, you, if you look at it with a creative eye, it's like, oh, I learned something. You know, I just, I will say, I just binged Wednesday, which mm -hmm. I really, really enjoyed a lot. That was um, just Jenna Ortega, the star, used to be on Disney Channel, and to see her grow up, and she's in incredible in this show she's a complete badass i absolutely loved it um gosh i love white lotus <laughs> i don't know if people saw the end. not kid appropriate but amazing um all the time it's again it's so hard because the content changes so often right like you look at something I, we're gonna have the show doctor who on our air on disney plus and I love Doctor Who. I'm a huge fan. And so that to me, I could watch those that those episodes over and over again. I think they're they're great. And I'm excited to see how the Doctor Who that I saw, how it morphs and changes when it comes on to Disney Plus. Um, but yeah. So you sometimes do like kids that they finish a movie and they say again. Oh my God. And you watch it again yes, and again. A hundred percent. Oh my. Okay. Let's, we're talking movies. The devil wears Prada. I think I've seen <laughs> that movie 32 times, like no joke. And I'm not a crazy repeat watcher, but that movie, if I'm feeling sad, if I'm feeling happy, if I'm whatever, I, that movie is like one of my favorites. That and anything James Bond too. Ah, uh, yeah. Those are cool too. So yeah, and uh, this is my last question and my favorite one. Uh, I'm very curious to know what is your favorite Disney princess character and why? Okay, so I have a, <laughs> I have a question to that question. Does it have to be a Disney princess? Um, <laughs> can, no. Can I, can I do a Disney princess and another character? Of course you can. Yeah, okay. I, I'm asking this because I I I was telling you before that uh, we went to to the celebration, the 25th celebration of, of Disneyland in Paris. Yeah. And uh, I remember my friend who's a journalist, she was asking the little girls there. And uh, well, it, it turned out it was uh, Elsa from Frozen. So that's why oh, I wanted to know. <laughs> interesting, that was, the, no, I would say my most favorite princess is Merida from Brave. I love what that movie stood for. I love that she was, adventurous and kind of took no prisoners and even though it faced adversity she still worked hard to to make everything right and she didn't need a prince and I think that's important you know that that she saved herself and her mm. family and so I really I really like that about about Merida and I guess also the same you know that I, I yeah. really I love the stories of princesses when they save themselves. Um, I would and say the, other, the character, the other, the other my favorite character is one of the first is Oswald. Um, so you know, not Mickey, but he has the the ears. He's mischievous, and I he's a little he's a, a little bit of a punk, and he's fantastic. I I just I love I love that character, and I hope to see more development. Uh, which I wanted since like I got to Disney. So cool. Yeah. Great. So, well, thank you so much for uh, sharing uh, all your experiences and thoughts and, and Disney World <laughs> with us. Uh, all the best for all the projects and, and the celebrations this year. And uh, yeah, wishing you all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you for everything you do. Obviously, female empowerment is so important and what you're doing is amazing. Thank you.